Welcome to the official Autodesk Inventor podcast. My name is Garen Gardner, and this is episode number 40. Uh, over the month, over the last month, I've received some feedback around having some type of, of podcast on constraints. You know, there there are a number of you that use constraints quite a bit and are pretty familiar with them. Um, and, and it may be that you use a handful of, of the constraints and you don't really know what the rest of them do. So some of the feedback that I received was, you know, leveraging some of those other things. So this is going to be a two-part series. Um, the first part will talk primarily about the assembly constraints. So that's, um, you know, the typical ones in the assembly tab. Mates, angle, tangent, and insert. And, you know, these are, are pretty standard type of constraints that, you know, if I pick a couple of faces, they it mates the two faces together. I can flip the direction. You know, I have my selection colors, so I can see the faces that I've chosen. Um, and then you also have a preview you can turn on and off. Now, one thing I use quite a bit, if I have the right height set up here, I can come in and do a predictive offset. And I can say, you know, I want to constrain these two faces together, so I'm just going to pick the top and the bottom face. And it maintains the exact same height. So it hasn't moved the height at all. It may shift it from side to side a little bit. If you don't want it to shift it side to side, add your flush constraints and things like that first. But it's making sure that it's the same height as it was previously. So that, that helps me out a lot when I'm doing things. So the, the predictive offset, the, the flush and mate, um, I think these are, are pretty typical. Now the um, you know things like the angle or the, the insert constraint, you know, I can do much the same thing. I can pick two faces and I can choose the orientation of how these are going to be constrained. If it's going to mate them together or if it's going to flip it upside down. In this case they're completely interfering with one another if I do the other solution. So there's two of them there. Um, but we'll do the, the other solution. And one other thing that I can do, I'm going to cancel out of that for a moment. You'll notice that in a lot of the areas you have pick component first or part first. This allows you, if I go into insert, to make sure that I pick the part that I'm going to add the constraint from and then I can add the constraint. So it's making sure if I have a lot of components I can make sure that I'm getting just the selection that I'm looking for. I can also add offsets on a lot of these. So you'll notice I can do something like a one inch offset. I get a nice preview. I know what it's going to look like. And then I also have, you know, this can spin around, but there may be some cases that I don't know what my degree of freedom available on my design is. So you'll notice in your assembly tab or your assemble tab, the bottom option is degree of freedom analysis and this allows you to see the degrees of freedom that are available in your design and actually get some animation of the degree of freedom so you know if I were to come in and suppress that insert constraint and then do that degree of freedom again I can tell it to show the range of motion and you're going to notice now that it's going to show the transitional and rotational degrees of freedom on this so I have three transitional and three rotational and then as I start locking some of these down um, and I go back into there, I can see what it's going to do. Um, you also have the ability to show other halves. So if I have a constraint, I'm working in a large assembly, and I don't know where that other half is, you can right-click other half. It expands the component and shows me where that other constraint, or, you know, the other half of the constraint is. And then I often will also name these so that I can understand a little bit better what it is. You know, I can, I can do something like insert plate and later I can come back and see what's going on with that. You also have a lot of constraints that you can derive the constraints. So I can come in here and tell it that um, in this case I want to drive this constraint. I want it to go from 1 to, let's say we want it to go from 0 to 2. I can hit play and I can see this come together. Now one of the, the things that's going on with this is, let's open this up a little bit, we're going to tell it that we want the step value to be something like 0.0625 so that when I play this we're going to notice that it has more steps other than just an inch in between. And then we can also tell it to start and start, so it's going to start, uh, let's do something like three of them, 
so that we can play that going back and forth. Um, and then you can also record this as a video if you want to capture it as a video and show it to somebody else. So you can do this with not only the insert constraints, you can do it with angle, mate, flush, you can, uh, I don't think you can do it with t um, the, 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 in the tangent constraint, but you can do it with a lot of others. Okay, so I think, um, I think that helps out with the, the mate insert, or the, the mate constraint and the insert constraint. We'll talk a little bit about the angle and the tangent. So I'm going to go over to another component. And we're first going to start off by let's add a couple of insert constraints in here. I'm just going to rotate around, make sure I get that face that I'm looking for. And you know, this I can drag it around, see what it's going to look like. Uh, we'll also add, let's just come over here. We're going to do an insert. This insert. I'm going to make sure that uh, we're going to change the direction so it's aligned to that face and we'll apply that and you can see that I can just spin that around. Now there's some things, one thing I wasn't going to cover but I can do it real quickly here. You can also turn on contact set which is handy. It's off my screen here. Um, let's see for some reason that, I, oh it's adaptive. So let's turn adaptivity off for a minute and then let's turn on contact and then you also have to remember where this is okay under the inspect tab there's a active contact on activate contact solver you want to make sure that's on so now you'll notice as I'm moving this up and down that it's coming in contact and that's all it's allowing it to move so you can turn on contact and it's, it's only going to allow it to move between a couple of faces that um, if, if those are both contact. I'm going to turn that off so now it, it can move all over the place. And I'm also going to turn contact off at the part level and I'm going to turn on adaptivity and I'll, I'll tell you why we're doing adaptivity. Um, to set this up as adaptivity, you know, this is an extrusion, the sketches is, is adaptive. Um, I think there are some other areas that, that we, I think I've got a podcast on adaptivity. I'd have to go back and look. Um, but there's, there's some things you can do on adaptivity. What we're going to do here with that adaptive is let's go back to our constraints. And I'm going to use tangent. What tangent allows me to do, um, and, and we'll talk about this outside of adaptivity for a minute. We'll come back to, to adaptivity and what that means. But let's start off with tangent. I can pick two faces and I can tell it that we want to add those that constraint so now you'll notice I can click and drag that around now I can also come in let's edit that and flip it to the other side and you'll notice that it's looking at that that is a cylinder so it's actually looking at, at the flip side so in this case it doesn't make sense but there are some things that you'll do that you'll need to flip that tangency to the other side so let's, uh, let's get it back to the way that it was so I can see that I can pivot that around. Let's add one more tangent constraint. We're just going to say from uh, that face and that face, pull that down. So now it's fully locked down. And I'm going to come in here with a constraint and I'm going to use my predictive angle constraint and I'm just going to have it put an angle constraint between those two and lock that down. I'm not sure why it moved that out of the way, but let's, uh, let's see if we can do that again. We'll do predictive. It may not like that adaptivity. It may, uh, may kind of freak out a little bit, but we'll try it. There we go. Okay, so it's fully locked down. Um, in fact, you know, we kind of have it over constrained because of, um, well, if it wasn't adaptive, that would be a little bit over constrained because we have the angle and the tangent. But because that's adaptive, what we can do now is I'm going to come over to that angle constraint and I'm going to name it Drive Me. This helps me later on when I want to come back and see where this constraint is. I'm going to right click on it, tell it to Drive Constraints, and we're going to go from 155 degrees to 165 degrees. Now I'm going to hit play, it'll give me a message that it can't solve it because I need to tell it to drive adaptivity. So now if I hit play, you're going to notice that it's actually allowing me to compress and uncompress that spring. And this is a sample file. You can play around with this, get a little better understanding of what they're doing. Let's do something like four, four repetitions. We'll tell it we'll do one degree increments. That's pretty nice. I can hit play now, and we're going to see that compress and uncompress. And, you know, while it's doing it, you can actually, we'll hit, uh, let's do something like ten times. 